other arm underneath, holding your elbow. There you go. And look at the over there at the yoga mats. There you go. Slightly up, like mm -hmm. really gazing into the stars. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll take the picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, chromatic warriors! Unchained, unchained. The Creative Summit, which has now affectionately been nicknamed VinciCon, has come to a close once again this year. And like a lot of all events lately, I'm forever changed having gone through the gauntlet. Uh, yeah, my, my intentions when I was going into this was to just capture a chronological documentation, everybody's work in progress, um, all of that. Oh, you gotta splice in that classical footage of a plane leaving the runway, right? Because how will people know you're traveling if they don't see footage of a plane taking off on a runway? So, enjoy the travel footage. Um, everything, despite what the footage may tell, went very smoothly. But I wanted to, uh, you know, just journal everything, basically, which I've done before at, at painting jams at these summits, before they're known as VinciCon. Um, so I was taking all of that sweet B-roll, and this time I thought I would just write down and talk about what happened afterwards. However, Vince was also taking footage and pretty much doing the same thing that I was going to do. I was also bored with, with my own idea, having done it before. But luckily, thankfully, as I'm back, I'm returned from this, um, I have a lot to look back on in hindsight, and... This little light bulb went off for me where I realized there's, there's been a lot of other motivational topics that I've wanted to make videos on. I know everyone enjoys those videos when I'm standing out in the, the beauty of nature, the wild sunflowers, that kind of thing. So I want to get back to those and, you know, I'm always kicking around motivational ideas and I realized that this weekend captured a lot of the ideas that were floating around in my head. So let me just do an editing break to collect my thoughts. Perfect. Okay. The first one that I wanted to talk about is profound boredom. I think that's a pretty well-known phrase these days, but people don't... You hear good advice, you don't carry it out. It's nice to put the distractions off to the side. Um, even in my own studio, it was, it was just nice to have a change of scenery. So if you can, find a change of scenery, find some time with some friends, of course. But what that really gave me was this deeper level of focus. It was nice to be working without, the, uh, without my brain running in the, in the background thinking about what I should be recording, if I want to write anything out for a script. This was like um, a strength camp. I got to get away and just fold time over itself into the same piece I got to challenge myself and deeply apply a lot of what I was talking I've been talking about in my my videos for the last six months or so and I've been rounding the corners on the at least the way that I describe concepts and also the way I perceive miniature paintings so it was nice to just be able to work on something analyze my work, undo it, redo it. I could have gotten this model done a lot more quickly if I was better at painting. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I, I challenged myself. I was trying to work with the light a little more intensely, create a little more dramatic light working on this larger canvas. I wanted the right side of the model to sort of trail off into the background. And under my normal schedule, I don't have, I don't quite have that time to just sit there and think, undo something drastically. You know, there, there are times when I'd lay down a tone and just, like, this is too deep, this is not right. And, and I can say the main intention here, like, you've, you've seen the video where I was talking about painting a model in black and white before, and just, I'm talking, I've been really keying in on, on volumes lately and trying to use a little bit more mid-tone in my work so the shadowed areas have more impact. On a larger model like this with the, the broader canvas you have a lot more space to work in so ordinarily I paint things you know very deep and dark so I, I tried to just get my my base in place of 
generally lighter tones and you know, prone to wet blending very heavy colors together and that creates a very dramatic dip but again I wanted just a little bit more control over that so you know this profound boredom like the the time to just sit there uninterrupted I barely looked at my phone you know I had to like remind myself oh yeah you, sh you should take some footage but yeah, we're just sitting around chatting with each other getting instantaneous feedback kicking ideas around as well you know it's it nice to describe my concept and my thoughts on composition to Vince or John and get immediate advice you know they they told me a few small changes here and there just reassured me on my ideas and yeah that was that was very nice but I just can't speak enough to the beauty of meditative time spent painting so Find that for yourself. Take time to make time. It doesn't have to be an entire day either, but put things away and just focus and work on your model. Which leads me into my next point, editing break. Okay, the next thing that I've been thinking about a lot is mastery. It's a very common question I get where people are asking me, how long did it take you to paint that? How long will it take me to get as good as you? How long to, for this? How long for that? All the, the time that adds up. Um, I look at, so, I've taken my hobby and I've made it into a career. So my life consists of painting for fun and painting for work. So choosing to wrap my entire life around this, this craft and career I enjoy it's been very rewarding, but I want to speak to you about my own personal hobby. I, you know, I feel like this is something I excel at because I've chosen to wrap so much time around it. But there are other areas that, that I struggle at a lot more intensely, so I'm, I'm more comfortable talking about the drums. I've been playing the drums as a hobby and grindcore and metal bands since I was like... 14 or 15 so I've been I've been playing the drums for like over 20 years now I'm not that good I'm, I'm all right like I can I can do some things but I always want to get better so what I've what I've chosen I've I, uh, I've chosen to really focus some time into it lately I have a band going we're going to be recording soon I'm trying to do it myself it's it's all very exciting so I found a drummer who I really admire. His skills are far beyond mine in the realm of what I want to be doing. So it's intimidating to see somebody who is who's further down the path than you. But I ask myself, how much further is he really down the path? How, how much time would it really take me? This little 10,000 hours thing, right? But I want you to think about it a little bit differently. I look at this person and I think I could get to that level if I practiced for three years straight. So how many days of practice is that realistically? 300 days a year? You know, if, if, I, if I can slice away, you know, enough personal time and three years, 900 days of practice? It is a lot of time, but I feel like it, it lays things out in a, in a stepped progression. So around day 300, you're going to be much better. So I want you to think about it like that, like the, the journey and the path of mastery is not boring. Um, but you need to, to like pick someone as, as your lead, as, as your hero, as your inspiration, as a benchmark, and, and think about what it would, uh, it would take to reach that point. You know, your own skill. Personally, that that uh, that helps me kind of lay things out in a more achievable form. Like I, I tell myself, if it was impossible, this drummer couldn't do that. If it was impossible to paint something, you would never see it. So everything that exists, and you know, all these all these skills, arts, and crafts that you see people carrying out, none of it is impossible. It is just an investment of time. Over the weekend, Vince made a comment about my vision. 
I was seeing things like textures on the model that he wasn't picking up. And he said, he's like, have you ever had an eye test? I feel like your, your eyesight is better than 2020. Like you have some kind of, you know, um, uh, what is, what is the word? Preternatural visionary skill. Sorry about that. I ran out of tape. <laughs> My memory card, uh, filled up. But is there any, uh, genetic advantage? Maybe things could uh, play a factor, but I really don't think so. I think the biggest secret is out in the open and the one that I'm trying to whisper to you right now, time and practice is the answer, but that time and practice is an enjoyable activity. And it's especially enjoyable when you get to spend it around creative people that you love. And it, it was very fun to be demoing Uncle Adam and Vince's new game we got a game of Tanks for the Apocalypse in as well, and I'm just so inspired by the people around me. These, these gatherings, I mark it in my calendar every year, and yeah, just uh, I'm just uh, continually impressed and thankful to be surrounded by people who motivate me. So I hope that this video has inspired you. I hope that I've, I've kind of shared some of my own insight into building and getting better because this is a path that I am on too. I'm climbing the same mountain and I'm here to help. So as a parting bit of advice, if you're watching this video, maybe a project has come to mind. Do something today to get that project closer to being complete, whether it's opening the box admiring the figure, just thinking about what you're going to do with it, laying down a coat of primer, a base coat, a wash, anything. Think about those days that make the years of practice and just know the only way to truly eat an elephant is one bite at a time. A most massive muscular thank you to Big Child Creatives. They kindly sent along these models for us to work our magic upon. Cheers. So, thank you for your support on Patreon. It means everything to me. I have really been able to do some amazing things through your support. Traveling to Vince's house, for example. So I, I just, I hope that you enjoy what I'm able to share back with you for, for your generosity. Reciprocation. So as always, until we meet again, I hope you're always painting and remain unchained.